Okay, here's something funny. About this time last week, I said, come back next week and join me because it's going to be all about the 60s and I can't wait to share with you what I have. Well, that was my poor communication because the comments started rolling in and everyone was saying, we can't wait to see what you made. We can't wait to see your 60s dresses. And um, I had made nothing. I was planning to show you guys what Candace gave me for Christmas. And uh, I haven't been this excited about a gift in a long while. But I thought, if they want 60s clothes, I'm going to give them 60s clothes. So I have three patterns that I sewed up that I can show you today. I don't like shooting in landscape mo mode to show um, clothing because you just have to be so far away from the camera you can hardly see anything. I'll show you what I quickly got together for this video and then I'll show you Candace's amazing gift to me. So the first pattern I made, uh, these are all, of course, from the 60s, my favorite decade to sew. This is McCall's 8506. I chose to make this out of a kind of sparkly fabric. So it's sparkly on one side and the other side is just very flat. And I thought, well, why not? It's going to be a caftan. Um, I did not make it full length, but I made it T length or ankle length and I put a slit on the right side. And I will insert videos of me wearing it. I also decided to contrast with this taupe fabric and use a deep orchid thread. Doubt you can see it. I top stitched everywhere with that deep orchid thread and I just love the color combination and I love the dress. The second one I put together for you is, well, for me. I made them for me, but I made them to, to have something to show you in this video. McCall's 2220. This is 1969, and you can tell that fashion is changing. It's just starting to look 70s. And this is a straight column dress. I usually always choose any vintage pattern that says it has a 36 bust. This one said 38 and it is a little roomy. So I'm thinking that I might go back and just sort of taper in the sides a little bit to give it eh, a little more of a fit. But that was the second one I did. This was my first border garment. So I have the border on the sleeves and I have the border on the hem. I did pretty well matching up the side seams right there and matching up the cuffs on the sleeves. This is a crepe, a rayon crepe. I did not put in the zipper, I just put in a little button loop and it's fine. I'll tell you what, these 60 patterns, they have one, maybe two things in common. First of all, they tell you to baste absolutely everything to the point of what, what you talking about, Willis? You do not need to baste that much at all. And then they always have the 22 inch zipper going in the back, which you also don't always need. I used to always put in the zipper just like a good instruction follower. 
and I have found that you just, you don't need them. So they had a zipper going into the back of this one. They did not have a zipper going into this one. They did have a zipper going into this shirt I'm wearing, and it was supposed to be here on the side, but you know what? I can put it over my head. So if you're gonna be sewing 60s patterns, just uh, make sure you pay attention to that zipper and see if you can't just, you know, get by without it. And also I used bias binding to finish off this neckline and ditched the facings and that worked great. So, and then the last one I did, I'm wearing and it is this shirt right here. This is McCall's 5495. And I thought the shirt was so cute, the way it comes down into points in the front and the back. I did the short sleeve version. I lengthened the bodice two inches, and I'm really glad I did. Hold on, stand up. Ooh. So it comes down to a little point in the front and in the back. Can't get it into the shot. I wanted my sleeves to end right there at the elbow so I didn't turn them up and cuff them like they call for on the pattern. Those were the three things that I made this week. But here's what I wanted to show you and what I was so gosh dang excited about. I opened this on Christmas morning. We have six McCall's Pattern Fashion Magazines. These are all from 1964, 62, 63. So early 60s, winter, summer, spring, Spring, summer, spring of 1963, and summer of 1962. I'm not going to go through the magazines because it would take a long time, but they are a feast for the eyes. They are absolutely stuffed, I mean stuffed, with dresses and all kinds of darling outfits. The photo shoots are hilarious. The ads are incredible. They're featuring brand new machines, which of course by today's standards are just so archaic. Look at this ad for Faf. Feminine. And every single dress, it's mostly dresses that they feature, but every single dress in the magazine, including on the ads, they tell you the pattern number. So, I mean, I don't think I put these magazines down for the first four days that I had them. I was just mesmerized and I thought, okay, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna find some of my favorite clothes. Then I'm gonna go onto eBay or Etsy and I'm gonna find these patterns. So I thought that I would show you two patterns that I found. I've bought a lot more than that, but I'll show you the two that I found. So in other words, I would find a dress that I love. In this case, this picture here. And I just, I love the 60s aesthetic. I love just about every single design that they came up with back then. Um, this is an ad for a fabric, some kind of fabric. And they had this full color ad that went on, well, it started way back here. And they, they show all these cute clothes and then they give the pattern numbers for every single one of them. And like I say, I just flipped for 
that one. Coincidentally, it was featured in another one of these magazines, right here is another picture of it. And I was able to find it and purchase it on Etsy. Ta -da! There it is. It's McCall's 7192. I just, I just adore it. I don't usually wear things cut low in the back. I'm going to get fit. I'm going to get tan and I'm going to make this baby for summer. So that was one of them that I found. And let's see if I can find the other one. Yes, I thought this one was so cute. You know, just a simple shift dress. And I went online. I was able to find it. <laughs> Where am I looking? And here it is. McCall 7238. Darling dress. I'm telling you what, I don't think, Candace said there were a bunch of bids on this auction and she did not think that she was gonna get it. And she said, I can't believe I want it, mom, because a lot of people wanted it. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't think anyone could love it more than I do because I just, I've just studied these magazines and I've bought a lot of patterns. Etsy loves me now. Some of them I've had to pay a lot for. This is the most I have ever paid for a pattern and I paid $11 for it because I was so enamored. Um, you guys, I'm telling you what, this is the best. Now, if you would like me to take one of these magazines and just do a flip through, I can do that. Uh, I thought it might be a little bit well, maybe not that interesting to people who don't have an appreciation for the 1960s like I do, but I could certainly do it because every single page, they're just filled with dresses and outfits and swimsuits and styles. So it's definitely like a little history capsule of what was popular. Of course, the dresses with the big gathered skirts were popular, but we know that the trapeze dress was huge. Belted suits were very, very big and very chic, I must say. Hats were everywhere. Here we have a little cape. And I love the ads. Look at the ads. The ads are great. So that was what I wanted to show you about the 1960s. I did sew these three patterns and I enjoyed the heck out of them. I absolutely love this shirt pattern. I think I will be making more. I toyed briefly with the idea of making pants in this exact same fabric. This is that stretch, oh, this chair. This is one of those Ikea chairs and it's like, rah, you go way down. Ah. This is that sort of stretch sateen that I got for $2 a yard. And I just thought it was such a cool print. I thought I'd make a pantsuit, top and pants matching. But now that I've made the top up, I think that pants out of the exact same fabric might look a little bit clowny. And these, this top looks good with black pants. So anyway. That was what I wanted to share with you today. I have got fabric up to the rafters. I will be back with fabric hauls, pattern hauls, and I'm also working on a 1960s dress construction video. Graham, my son, and his wife Anna gave me a tripod that's on a swivel and it's gonna make shooting tutorials a lot more convenient. So, we're gonna have some fun in the new year. Thank you for joining me today. I'll list all these patterns in the description box. Come back and see me next week. I hope you're doing great. Bye.